Oh no! So he's reminding. <laughs> yeah, no. You, you tell me if you're not comfortable with this. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, right. to, like look at yourself in the camera a computer like that. I, just, <laughs> I don't know. I, maybe I, I could use the phone if you want. I don't no, care. Okay, fine. that'll work. We'll just, yeah, sorry, right. yeah. All right. Thanks. I, I appreciate you all being flexible with that. Okay, so we were just talking about how you came from Georgia and how you just been nominated to the Georgia PTA. Mm-hmm. Um, how there weren't enough funds there and that was, how that was a really big challenge for mm-hmm. the school district and how you got involved because you felt like there's no way you can expect people to invest in your kids if you're not invested in the school system. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. And so have you noticed any difference as far as the funds in Columbia versus back in, in Atlanta? Or I think one of the things that we were impressed with was Georgia let, at least the school system that we came from, let it get bad. And we've noticed, especially Dr. Belcher, and now Dr. Stiflin is not letting that happen. He's went to the parents. It was the year we came, uh, you know, we need to raise property tax. We need this money. And mm-hmm. this is what's going to happen if it doesn't, you know, we don't do right. it. And they took care of it. And I still think there's some things down the road that are going to hurt. But I think they're trying to stop that as well. And I um, was just really impressed with the way, I mean, he came to our school to a PTA meeting and explained exactly what was needed and you know, just raise property tax, and we're still baffled why they didn't do that in Georgia. Yeah, definitely. And we got to a point when our kids like joined the art department or the art here, all they did was color in Georgia because all they had was paper. And I mean, you know, my kids would come home and say, "We did clay today, or we did this today, or we're making this." Yeah. That wasn't what we came from. So right. we were just really impressed that they nipped it in the bud. And they took care of it. Yeah, definitely. Or so at least for now. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. So that's really exciting. So they get more of a variety of things to learn from. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed that in any subject areas outside of just art? Well, it's like the fifth graders at Paxton just got iPads. I oh, mean, wow. You know, the, the battle high school, no books. I mean, we're seeing a lot of things. There were a lot of different things that um, we've been very impressed with here that we didn't have in Georgia. And our kids are actually, you know, we were in one of the better school systems. And our kids were behind a little bit, and they were gifted. So, yeah. Um, been overall just very impressed. Yeah, definitely. That's great. So as far as like you, f- you feel like Columbia is really more involved in uh, promoting student learning, does that make you feel like, oh, wow, like more excited about being involved also? That you yes. feel like you're doing more? You're like, obviously, you're really committed to um, investing in the school district in Georgia as well. But has that just furthered that now that you're here? Well, yeah, because I think the more I help, that alleviates the teachers. That gets our programs going. That's how... We fund, you know, we fundraise to get more things for the you know, the students. This year, um, I created Operation Recess. All of our fundraising is going to playground equipment, special ed playground equipment. Uh, we're trying to get a projector and a big screen so that they, when they can't go outside during recess, they can do some learning through that. And then we're also doing uh, P equipment. So yeah, I mean, the more the more I see my kids thrive, the more I want to get in and want to be involved and help. Definitely. Definitely. I jumped in a little late. I'm sorry if you, you may have already answered this, but do you do this for all Columbia Public Schools or just the I'm just primarily in Paxton. And now okay, that yeah. um, Madison is at Jeff, yeah. I'll get more involved. I'm president of PTA at Paxton, okay. so I'm not okay. doing as much at Jeff because I sense. just can't. You know, yeah. There's just yeah. not enough of time. Course, of course. But I'll get involved at the middle school level mm-hmm. coming up. So Yeah, okay. I'm yeah. kind of just staying back and just seeing where help's needed and That's where nice. to get involved and where not to, you know, so... I'll start getting more involved on the middle school level. Okay. Yeah, definitely. What kind of things do you, are you planning on getting involved with at the middle school level? Well, there's a building volunteer coordinator position there. Um, several of my friends are on the board. I've signed up to help with membership and to help with just as a needed basis. You know, I think they're doing candy grams this week for the kids. I mean, there's you know there are a lot of fun things that they do too, just not you know classroom related. I remember candy grams. Candy grams are always so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you like find the time to like? balance the volunteering with your work I know you said you, you work full time do you like I don't know like what kind of hours do you work and like where do you fit the volunteering in there I guess there's a lot of school. things that can be done outside <laughs> of the school you don't yeah. necessarily have to be in the school when right. the school is open yeah I uh, create a lot of databases and keep those straight you know and keep directories and things like that um majority of the stuff the stuff I do is behind the scenes okay so a lot's done at night weekends yeah um, I'm not up at the school, you know, for the hours I have, I'm not up at the school. Well, the right, that's what yeah. I yeah. So, but we try to get in there where we can and do a little bit. But okay. for the majority, and that's one thing I really wish I could get more people involved, is to realize that there is a lot that could be done yeah. behind the scenes or if you have small kids or, you know, 
it doesn't have to be inside the school mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. So do you work five days a week? Mm-hmm. Wow. And so then uh, are the <clears throat> excuse me are the PTA meetings during the week or they? We do. We'll, we'll have a, we have three meetings a year for the general public, and then we have a board meeting the first Tuesday of the month at night. Okay. And the, all the board comes together and we talk about what's happening, what needs to be done, and if all the committees are getting the help that they need for the events that are coming up. All right, definitely. Great. Uh, do you have any um, specific accomplishments from volunteering or favorite moments from uh, volunteering that just really made you say, wow, like, I'm so glad I did this? I'm proud of Operation Recess. I think that's going to, you know, I, one of the things that PTAs kind of get a reputation for is, you know, you ask me to fundraise, you ask me to send money in all the time, where is it going? And so I've been one of the first to say, okay, we're going to focus right here. Every dollar goes here, not, you know, I think a lot of people think they go into parties and the fun stuff, and it, it doesn't. It goes, we want it to have a specific, you know, building improvement or to be able to aid the teachers. Um, we give the teachers money at the front of the year. We're real proud of that because we know that they take a lot of the burden of their classroom mm-hmm. and supplies on. So I think we gave them each $125 this front of the school year. So oh, um, in Georgia, I, right before we left, I got was one of the first to get 100% membership for our student-faculty uh, ratio. So membership's always been a big thing to me, and that's what I was going to do on the state level was membership and open charters, uh, PTA charters in schools that don't have a PTA in the state. So, But we lived, we moved here. So You said 100%. Um, Membership, does that mean you have all the positions filled for the No, teacher? membership is your parents joining at the oh, front okay. of the school year, and you have to have one membership per child. So oh, you okay. could have an instance like if a parent, two parents bought two memberships, but we had 1,300 kids in the school. So we achieved one membership per child plus one membership per staff. So we oh, had wow. Yeah, so we had 100%. 100% so. Okay, great. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about uh, Operation Recess? It's just our fundraising goal for the year. Like I said, we gave the message to the parents that we wanted them to know exactly where their money was going, what was, you know, and it's the playground improvements. We've had a, I think Columbia Park and Rec came out with our principal and walked our property and looked to see what we could work to improve upon. Um, It's just to kind of expedite getting more equipment than having to go through the school system because every, you know, Everyone's asking, so they have to kind of prioritize, and uh, we created an outdoor classroom. Um, there was a fifth grade class last year that won a grant and got apple trees, and they planted apple trees in a little mini orchard, and then we, uh, over the summer, had an Eagle Scout create benches and um, outdoor tables for the area, so now we have an outdoor classroom that had been kind of left unmaintained for a long time. So we did that, and then we're looking, we just... Um, it's not completely Operation Recess, uh, but we just gave the librarian money to upgrade teacher laptops. So we had 17 that needed to be updated, and we get a certain credit from the school system, but we went ahead and upped them. I think we gave them almost $9,000 oh, to wow. up um, to better laptops so they will last longer and they're more a better resource for the teachers. Oh, definitely. That's yeah. great. Um, so does Mackenzie like going to Paxton? She mm-hmm. enjoy it there. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite subject? Math. math. My, both my girls are very strong in math. Oh, yeah. So they seem to okay, like so it. the opposite of well, I, yeah. I don't want to speak for you. No, you're, 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 you're <laughs> so journals. You're Her favorite subject, actually, right now, um, she has a very diverse class, and a lot of the students don't speak English or very little. They're learning. Wow. And um, there are a lot of Korean children in her class. And so she's teaching them English, and they're teaching her Korean. Wow. So oh we, she just rattles off. Doesn't like statements at, at dinner. <laughs> yeah, no way. She'll just be like, da 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 da. I'm like, okay. She's like, moon, moon, come out and play. And I'm like, all right. That's beautiful. <laughs> so, yeah, Paxton's a very beautiful. diverse school. It's wow. You would think it wouldn't be, but yeah, there are a lot of. Yeah, I wouldn't really necessarily expect that in Columbia, but that's well, a lot of people, a lot of uh, teachers over mm-hmm. here. Um, mm-hmm. I know the head of the education department's children go to Paxton. Um, we've got those apartments around the mall. So, we get a very neat mix of students and. I've really enjoyed my kids having that. I think it's been good for them. For sure. mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's really cool. And so, um, just to speak off of that, you, you said you enjoyed that your kids have you get to experience diversity. Is there anything in Georgia that you feel like you didn't get to experience uh, growing up that you're really happy that Mackenzie and Maddie get to experience here in Columbia? I think just overall, moving to a different region of the country, um, there's schools like MU that we would have never considered growing up 
in Georgia. You know, we went to Georgia State. But I think that there's just a whole nother... We've learned that, you know, because we were primarily Georgia almost all of our lives. So I think just having... There's an open-mindedness out here in Columbia that I don't think we really came from and just a different type of person, people. And um, like I said, the education has been very, you know, outstanding compared to, you know, unfortunately what we thought was good. It took leaving and going into another system to say, wow, you know, there's so much more that they could be doing. So Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Was there, is there anything? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to ask, like, uh, you may have also covered this earlier, but was there like a defining instance kind of that made you say you need like, okay, I need to get involved like with your kids or have you, were you just kind of uh, like involved from the start? Like how, what, what was like the thing that drove you to I think it's automatic. My move. mom was very involved. Okay. And so I kind of grew up like, you know, cause I stayed at home for 11 years. So mm-hmm. it was kind of like, okay, I stayed at home. So my role needs to be involved at the school. And yeah. I'm also kind of, a take charge and take it over type person. Right, right. So, you know, Okay. in fact, on our way to Jeff, my husband was like, you will not sign up for anything. <laughs> <laughs> you have enough. <laughs> so, um, it, it was just automatic. Okay. I just really feel that I can't ask, like I said at the beginning, I can't ask other people to invest in my children yeah. if I'm not going to show that I'm willing to put the same investment back into them. Into right. The school. Right. Definitely. Um, is there anything else you, you want to ask right now? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, well, I mean, you don't happen to have, like, just a personal, uh, any kind of, like, uh, anecdote from your volunteering that, like, kind of touched you personally that was, I don't know, a powerful experience. I mean, you can say, no, I, I don't want to, like, try to manufacture no, something. I, mean, but <laughs> I think it's eye-opening that I think it's very automatic to do this and then there are other people that don't right and then you also are able to identify the children that just don't have the resource to Uh come in and help you know and i and i like to reach out to them and you know for example we do a lunch and learn uh, where you bring in food for your kid and you see those children that are sitting there and you know there's not going to be a parent come they're not going to get mcdonald's or something and so like i always try i go get pizza and i have the teacher identify ahead of time who you know needs you know not going to have a special lunch and so you just you get involved with the kids on a different level and you you do see that there are children that are struggling there's children that are hungry there's you know that just don't have a parent that's going or able I, don't, I can't automatically assume that they can't or they won't you know they have a job they can't leave and yeah. run over at lunchtime so right. it's it's a it's a good way to get to know the teachers. It's a good way to get to know the students, and you get to see some really unique situations that are going on. Absolutely. So, does that work? Yeah, that's, okay. that's actually <laughs> great. Thank you. Yeah, it sounds like that motivates you as much as mm-hmm. your own kids. You know? Yeah. That's I mean, great. There's, every child there needs a break and opportunity, and you know they need the support. So this is yeah. a way to provide it and to help the teachers out. Awesome. Wow. That's really great. Okay, I think that's about all I have. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Oh, no problem. So this is just an assignment? That's right. Okay, cool.